So this is the first video on SQL programming, which is kind of a misnomer. I'm going to show you how to do some things in SQL starting from very simple and probably giving more details than you thought you needed. The first thing is, is that we need a database, a SQL Server database. Now, if you're doing something locally just to try to teach yourself SQL or whatnot, you can install XAMPP, which gives you this SQL Server here. Uh, you can see running that. This is all running locally. This allows me to do some SQL uh, programming, to do some testing uh, without being even connected to the internet. If you aren't using this, if you're, uh, for instance, going to work at Bank of America, it's very reasonable for you to say, well, how do I connect to the server? and expect them to help you through that. Um, now the thing is I'm going to connect to a SQL Server and I've got to have some front-end software. Some people prefer Navicat. I like my SQL Workbench. It's free. And here I'm going to connect to my local um, server here just by clicking on that. You can see here that I've got all of these uh, databases on that server. Um, right there and so I can connect to those data databases and run queries and all sorts of things. This is my front end for SQL programming. I'd write the programming right here for example this is a SQL statement that just describes the auth item child table in the e-commerce database. Another tool that actually is very handy and if you're running uh, XAMPP here you can just go to phpMyAdmin this is running again on my local machine, PHP my admin. Here's all my databases, the same databases you saw before. I can go to one of those databases, like this e-commerce database, and I can just go to any one of these here. Shows me the table, and I can even run SQL, write the SQL programming right here. This is good for some investigative work. Uh, I wouldn't use this for writing SQL. Uh, MySQL Workbench will give you more flexibility for saving queries and things like that. The next thing that I think is important is connecting this to Excel. Uh, MySQL programming is great, pulls data out, but really doesn't give you a lot of flexibility in how you show that data. Now if you're just pulling data to get information or if you're using uh, SQL programming to connect to a web server, that's a different story. But what I'm going to assume here is that you're going to pull some data and you're going to want to look for it. Uh, you're going to want to look at it and, and manipulate it. Um, here in Excel, and that's what I'll use here in my front in Excel. Now I'll do all of the work in uh, my SQL Workbench. Uh, test some things, pull some data, see what I can get. Finally, once I'm happy with that SQL right here, I'll go over to Excel here and I'm going to go to Data Connections. And here you can see that I don't have any connections. So I'm going to add a connection. These are the default connections, which aren't uh, what we want to do. So I want to uh, browse for more. And then I want to say, again, there's the default ones. And then I want to say a new source. And I've got this ODBC DSN. Okay. Now I'm going to cancel this and show you if you don't have that, we're not connecting to a MySQL server. Uh, and we're not connecting to anything else. We want this ODBC DSN. So what we need to do before we do that is you may have to go to the MySQL site and download the ODBC connector. Okay, you definitely want to download the right one, the 64-bit or the 32-bit. If you have a 64-bit machine, which it's hard to believe you wouldn't, uh, you're going to want to download that one. Now, once you download the connector, it just goes into a file. So where that will go is here in this directory here, this connector ODBC. So it installs these files. That's all it does is you know create these files for you. It doesn't actually do anything. To actually install them, you're going to have to go to your control panel, administrative tools, data sources. Now you see mine is already installed here, okay? But um, I'm going to go through the steps of what you would want to do. So I've already got my ODBC connected there. So I'm going to add. Uh, let me just um, back up here a second. User mean I'm the only person on this computer who will be able to use this connector. I, I could make it available to everyone on this computer or I can create a file that then I could give to somebody else. I'm going to just create one here. So Now if you don't see this option here then you haven't installed it correctly and you want to go back and try to do that again. You want to see this option here. Okay. Once I'm here, this name doesn't matter. I could give it any name I want. A new connection is fine. 
Okay. Now this port three thirty three oh six. Now that's that's critical here. You want to make sure you have the right port here. My SQL Server here in this case is thirty three oh six, and there are some default ones. Okay. Now user. Now let's go over to PHP my ad. Here I am in PHP my admin, and I can go to this database, and I can say, uh, and I can say um, edit privileges. I can even add another user. Um, other than root. Now root here is is my default with no password but I can edit the privileges and I'm going to tell you why this is important. So I'm going to add a new user or if I was going to go to root I could say here's the things that you can do here's this has all the to do with data maybe I just want to select and I don't want to insert or update and the reason I point this out is because if you're connecting to someone else's server you you don't want you do not want to have uh, cases where you are going to insert or delete things that you shouldn't. Uh, likewise, you're not going to want to change the structure of the database or do any of the administrative tools. So if somebody gives you access to a database, you want to make sure, especially if you're new, that you only have read access. You want to be able to read the data and you want to be uh, unafraid that you might hurt something. So let's just make make sure you have that. Here I'm just going to go ahead and log in as root. So here I am back here and I, the login is root. There's no password and I'm going to select the database. Now it should give you the options of your database here because it went out to this port and said let me see what databases we have here. So I'm going to click to e-commerce e and then I'm going to test it. I was successful. If you're not, you need to go back and make sure that that works. I'm going to cancel this because I have this e-commerce database already set up and that's the one I'm going to use. So again I'm back here in Excel. I'm going to say there's a new source. You want to see this ODBC DSN. Free download if you don't have it. And then here I see the name of my file here. This e-commerce. Now it's going to say what tables do you want to have access to. I'm not going to go through all of this right now and I'm going to cancel this because in another video I'm going to go through actually using Excel with some data. So I want to start with putting the connection right in there. Now let me also tell you that SQL is a common language that has different flavors. You could have for example uh, I'm using MySQL but you could also have Microsoft SQL Server you could have Oracle SQL Server and there are things that are uh, similar between the two but there's things that are also different and so you want to make sure that you understand what server you're you're connecting to. I'm going to be connecting to a MySQL server so everything I do here will be on MySQL. So that is all of the tools here that I've, I've created and um, I'm going to be used for doing this stuff. You can quickly browse here. This is the server that we're going to be looking at here. Here's the tables. But this doesn't tell you anything about the tables. I can guess but it really doesn't tell you anything. And what you want, what you would ideally want, is you would want a map like this. And you're not going to get one. But you want a map like this. Okay? That tells you how everything works and how everything is connected. Now this is an e-commerce system here and it's and it's great. It's laid out, kind of shows you the connections. If I need to see well where does this connection really go, it it highlights that. Okay, that would be great if you would get that. Chances are you're not going to get that though. So what you at best could hope for is that you could reverse engineer and I'll reverse engineer this exact database here. Okay, I'm going to reverse engineer the e-commerce one. And what's it doing is it's pulling all of the data and putting it into a file like that. And you see, oh my gosh, you know, it, it doesn't uh, look very helpful at all. So we could auto layout. I have a better idea, but you see things are just not neatly grouped and things like this, but a much better idea of how things are connected. So for example, if I wanted to um, see this payments here, I could see that payments is connected, uh, you know, where it's connected to and, and all of that. So you want an idea of how things are connected. Reverse engineering here in MySQL Workbench is a nice simple way to do that. So that's everything in terms of tools and what we're going to use and what I'm going to refer to.
So that's all of our tools and everything that we'll be using. Uh, we'll do our first SQL query here, and this is one that's actually kind of useful. Here in MySQL Workbench, we type a, a line uh, and we end it with a semicolon, and Control Enter will execute this line from where I'm at, doesn't matter where the cursor is, up to the semicolon. Um, you can actually execute multiple uh, SQL statements, one after the other, this way also. Now the first mistake I made, this is a uh, reserved word here, describe, but the mistake I made is very common to do this. Have that all in caps. That's kind of indication that this is a uh, key word. Now this isn't a bad um, thing to do, and I do it quite often just to kind of give me an idea what is what is in there. I'll hit control enter, and it tells us exactly what the database is made of. It has an ID, which is our primary key, it auto increments, so no matter what gets um, inserted in here, it gets the next number, and it has a parent and a child. Um, no indication that that it links to anywhere. We'll talk a little bit more about keys and foreign keys, but honestly, that has more to do with insertion of data uh, than it has to do with actually reading data out of it. Um, so that's it for now. The next video we uh, are going to write, I wanted to write at least one statement, so uh, we wrote one statement, describe, and this is the table, uh, I'm sorry, this is the database, and this is the table name, and it tells us about that.